I am back at the house with the two vintage heat pumps. The uh, 86 Train XL 1200 and the what I believe to be a late 70s uh, General Electric Executive Weathertron heat pump. Just decided to come back here with my SLR and take some higher quality pictures. And get some pictures of the data sheet. I believe this one is a two ton and this one's a three ton, but I'm not totally sure. And the uh, XL1200 is obviously the upstairs unit because you can see the line set going upstairs. The air handler is probably upstairs. And the guy who owns the place next door was telling me that he believes the house has oil heat, but he isn't sure. So my guess would be it's like an oil hybrid heat system. It's either baseboard, like hot water baseboard, and the uh, heat pumps and central air are totally separate, or it's oil forced air, or, um, and my camera's doing that thing again, it won't let me zoom in, I don't know what's up with that, oh well, anyway, this one might just be a, a, uh, a heat pump with electric backup heat, and that one might be one with the oil furnace. Because what's common sometimes around here is in a house with gas or oil heat when they don't want to run gas heat or gas lines or oil connections upstairs or whatever. When the air handler's installed upstairs, they just do a heat pump upstairs because it's always going to be about 10 degrees hotter upstairs anyway. I mean, I keep my heat at like 66, 67 in the winter. Sometimes even 65. All right, since I've got a lot of uh, viewers who ha are interested in um, lawn mowers and other power equipment, I'd get a video of this too. It's actually in decent shape aside from the uh, flat tire. Troy built. But yeah, something over there is running. Here's the pool. Pool needs a good cleaning, but it's not in horrible shape. And the be the op most obvious way to tell if the house has electricity running to it is if the um, kilowatt hour meter is running. And I don't know where the hell, the hell it is at this house. There's the pool equipment. That is the pool filter. Um, it does not appear to have a heater. And it looks like there might be some stuff missing, and I had to shut the camera off and turn it back on to make the, the zoom in, zoom out work. I don't know what the hell was up with that. My camera did it once before when I was filming the uh, air conditioners at my friend's new house for the first time. Beer. I think that's a beer refrigerator. I think you actually plug that into the side, into the wall and you put ice in it and it refriger refrigerates the beer or it might just be a cooler. I'm personally more of a yingling guy. Bud Light is okay, but I'm more of a yingling guy. Or Sam Adams, especially Oktoberfest. But yeah, those are the heat pumps. Hold on. And I don't know why they have the back panel removed. I mean, this unit is in pretty decent shape. It needs to have the hedges trimmed, but I mean, um, turn on the power for this house and there's no reason this, this XL1200 shouldn't just fire right up. And speak of the devil, there's a can of yingling right there. Ugh.
Let me see if I can find the kilowatt hour meter. But the inside is not in bad shape at all. It's hard to see with the camera, but I'm looking through there and the kitchen's a little outdated, but the, uh, the house is in beautiful shape. I mean, it's not a mess inside at all. Where in the bloody hell is the kilowatt hour meter? It's got a nice brick patio here. This is like that place in Georgia I was exploring last summer. And that's nice, the deck goes right into the pool. I have a feeling it's not as disgusting as it looks, it's just that spot right there. Put a propane heater in there and you got yourself one hell of a party house. Deck's in decent shape. But yeah, here are the heat pumps. And again, aside from that stick down in there, these are in decent shape. Now, I don't know if in this design, the uh, reversing valve is in the back area, like in this one, or if it's actually down within, you can actually see it by looking down into the unit. Don't know what kind of fan motor it has. Obviously, since it's G, it's gonna have a climate tough reciprocating compressor. It has the famous spine fin coils. And it is impossible to tell line set and wiring from twigs and weeds and shit. Yeah, nice little unit though. Nice little units. So, if I deciphered that uh, data sheet correctly, we are looking at approximately five tons of heating and cooling. So like I said, uh, in Pennsylvania, I mean, typically up to 3,000 square feet, you can get away with only one five ton unit to cool the whole house, even in the two stories. Like my friend's house with the Bryan heat pump just has one five ton Bryan and it's almost 3,000 square feet, not including the finished basement, and that works fine. But there are other houses I've been in that are smaller than that where the AC doesn't work worth a shit upstairs. It's very, very weak upstairs. I keep hearing noises. I'm wondering if there's like a um, homeless person seeking shelter in this house. But yeah, um, from my experience, it all depends on how well the system is designed. Some houses that are really big will do fine with just one system. Some houses that are small will do lousy with just one system. It all depends on how the house is designed. Every house heats and cools differently. And um, I was just talking with a fellow YouTuber about this. He was saying how a, uh, a 3,500 square foot house in North Carolina only needs one five ton unit. And I tend to agree with them. I thought otherwise before, but um, as long as everything's installed properly, just five tons of cooling for 3,400, 3,500 square feet does sound uh, plausible. Though, just based on the experiences I've had with two-story homes that only have one air conditioner, I'd go with two, two and a half ton systems for a house that needs one five ton unit because, I mean, like I said, every two-story house cools differently, but, but, uh, you could have a really big house that cools, heats and cools really evenly and is comfortable, and you can have a small house that heats and cools unevenly and feels miserable. So it all depends on a number of things. Based on my past experience with how large, or just two-story houses in general of any size, that only have one system, I'm going to go with the two, with two uh, 
with two units that add up to the uh, exact nominal tonnage that the whole house requires. There's the disconnect box, presumably for the XL1200. Right there, that one is for the, uh, the um, executive. Wait, is it? I forget it. Yeah, that's an executive. And I think it might be, uh, oh, it's off. Yeah, this one might be busted. This one might actually not be functional. They have all the part, the back panel taken off of it. This one might have been being serviced. I am pretty sure it works though. All right, once again, train and GE heat pumps. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video out. This has been a Stamped Octagon production.